Hello, I am Mike, and welcome to this episode of Let's Live Code. Uh, we're going to finish up this discussion of the basics of audio effects and title cycles, um, and from here we'll be continue to look at patterns and control values, but I just wanted to give you a warning that this is by no means an exhaustive list of every single audio effect that title cycles has to offer, um, but it is all of the main ones, and hopefully by the end of the series I will have covered every aspect of the documented code in title cycles, uh, which is I realize is a lot to do, but I'm having a ton of fun doing these videos. So in this episode, we're gonna look at the audio effects for crush, phaser, filtering, and ring modulation. Uh, let's start with crush. Title cycles comes with a fairly nice out of the box bit crusher. Bit crushing is a form of audio distortion, and with it, we can lower the bit rate of the playback. Anytime a signal is converted from the analog to digital domain, we create digital information. An analog signal or an audio signal is turned to ones and zeros to create that sound. The way we capture that sound is by sampling two specific parameters. One of them we've already talked about in a previous video, which is sample rate, or the number of audio snapshots in a second. The other one is the bit rate, and bit rate refers to the sample quality of the volume, which is expressed as a binary word. So, Let's say that you had a bit rate of one. You have one variable that can have two states, which is either on or off. And in volume, that means you're either gonna have full volume or silence. If you have a bit rate of two, then we have two variables with two different states, or two to the second power. So now we have four different places of volume. And a bit rate of three has eight different places of volume, and so on, and so on. Let's take a look at a pattern that I have. And I'm just using a basic snare drum roll to get us going with this audio effect. If we use the audio effect crush, we can set the argument for the bit rate that we're going to use to sample with. And of course, we're not going to get any volume here because zero means there's no places for volume. Now, if we combine this audio effect with the course that we learned in a previous video, we can an interesting effect will happen when we play with both the bit crushing and lowering of the audio sample. Let me demonstrate. And what we get with this is a sound that starts to sound a little bit like old school video game, of, in, uh, game effects. And the reason for this is pretty simple, is because the architecture for those old systems that were built on the principle of either 8 or 16-bit systems uh, refers not only to the graphics, but also to the sound architecture. So the next audio effect that we are going to examine is going to be filtering. Tidal comes packaged with some pretty nice filters which let us cut out certain frequencies that change the tonal characteristics or the timbre of the sound. If we think about the human hearing range, the range that we can hear at, generally speaking, humans hear at a range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20,000 cycles in a single second. That's our hearing range. So 20 hertz are the low frequencies and 20,000 hertz are very, very high frequencies. And what filters do is carve out certain frequencies in a section. For example, let's look at a low pass filter. The audio effect is LPF. A low pass filter, as the name implies, will cut high frequencies and let low frequencies pass. So the argument that we would give our LPF is going to be an argument of where we start cutting higher frequencies. That means that the lower the number goes, the muddier the sound is going to become. Uh, sometimes these filters are called high cut filters, and we can apply it to our drum pattern like so.
Then at the other end of the spectrum, we'll have a high pass filter. And as the name implies, this will cut low frequencies and let high frequencies pass, which means that the lower the number is, the more natural the sound is, and the higher the argument goes um, in cycles per second, the tinnier or lighter the sound becomes. All right, and you can actually use a high pass filter and a low pass filter together. If you think about that for a second, if I go in here and type in hashtag LPF and I give that an argument, um, say I give a low pass filter with an argument of, well, I'm writing 8,000, but if I go back here and let's say just 3,000 hertz and a high pass filter of 1,000 hertz, from 1,000 to 3,000, then there are 2,000 hertz. Um, in between there. This section of frequencies, this 2000 hertz is called a band of frequencies. And if I'm letting those frequencies pass, then I'm cutting everything else. That's called a band pass filter because I'm letting the band of frequencies pass. We have this actually built into tidal cycles without having to specify the endpoint of either of these filters. All we do is give it a center frequency and it cuts evenly on both sides. For every octave that we drop, it turns it down by 12 decibels, which is why it's a 12 decibel bandpass filter. Now, what's really nice about a bandpass filter is if you feel that you need a certain frequency on either end of the spectrum, if you want a low frequency, you just type in a low argument. If you want a high frequency, you type in a high argument. So it makes them really intuitive to use. And what fun would filtering be if we didn't do a filter sweep? A filter sweep is a technique where we show the filter in its various stages, going from low to high or high to low. In this case, we'll use a bandpass filter. And an easy way to do that in tidal cycles is to simply pattern out, um, like I'm doing right now, go ahead and pattern out different frequencies across the spectrum going in one direction. In this case, we're going from low to high. And with every one of these filters, with the low pass filter, with the band pass filter, with the high pass filter, we can change the Q amount or the quality amount of the filter by either using LPQ, BPQ, or HPQ. And the filter or quality or Q amount is the increase in volume right at the point of cutoff. And this lets us excite frequencies at the edge of the filter. Let me just go ahead and demonstrate that with this band pass filter to start off with. The Q input takes a range of 0 to 1, 0 being off, 1 being on. Uh, this is more apparent in a low pass filter. It's more obvious. Listen to this. clearly hear by the end of that the filter was getting pitches because we're driving the amplitude at cutoff so hard we're driving the filter in what's called self oscillation so we could hear specific notes okay well the next um, audio effect that we have is a phaser a phaser is created by directing the audio signal into two different paths the first pass is an all-pass filter which keeps the amplitude of the waveform but alters the phase relationship of the waveform and when this waveform is combined with the unaltered waveform, 
the second waveform, the amplitudes of both signals are added and a comb filtering or notching effect is created, which is our phaser. Um, it's a really common effect for guitar and keyboards, and it's one that can be heard on countless recordings. In Tidal, we have two parameters that we can use with phaser. Our phaser rate, which can provide an argument of cycles per second that we can use as an offset to create our phase effects. And the second parameter is our depth, which is going to turn up the intensity of our phase effect. And this accepts the argument 0 and 1. Um, if 0, there's no effect, and if there's 1, we have full effect, which is why in this example right now, I'm going to use one just so we can hear everything clearly. And our final audio effect in this series is going to be ring modulation in Tidal. Well, what is ring modulation? Um, the main purpose with ring modulation really is to create sort of these robot metallic sounds. And the best, in best terms, um, ring modulation in its simplest form is amplitude modulation. Um, but it's at the audio rate level and it has kind of the special input. So the name comes from how the process looks on a schematic, where it's commonly represented by a ring of diodes. Um, a ring modulator multiplies two signals together in a carrier modulator format, and it creates two brand new frequencies, which are both the sum and difference of those frequencies. And these are commonly referred to as sidebands. Well, what does this actually mean? Um, well, let's break this down a little bit. Let's say um, that we have two frequencies. The first frequency is going to be 4,000 hertz, just to keep this nice and simple. And the first, uh, second frequency that we have is going to be, well, let's say 2,000 hertz. So when we have um, the amplitudes, when they're together, they're the sum and differences of those uh, frequencies or the sidebands. If the first sideband is going to be 2,000 hertz and the second sideband is going to be 6,000 hertz. And what's left is this audio effect that doesn't contain either of the original frequencies. It now contains these sidebands um, because the carrier frequency is canceled out in the pro process. In order to get ring modulation started in Tidal, I'm going to go ahead and use the Moog um, patch because it's a, a synth and you would commonly hear this kind of sound with us. Um, the two arguments that we need are ring and ring F. Ring is going to accept a rate from 0 to 1, 0 being off and 1 being fully on. It's the intensity of the effect mixed in with the original signal. And the ring F then represents the modulator frequency that's going to be modulating the audio file. So if we have this, and in this case, um, here's what this sound should sound like. All right, and there is a third parameter that you can actually use with this, uh, which is ring df, uh, that you give a cycles per second argument for, that it's, it is a slide frequency. So if I give it positive numbers, it will slide up. If I give it negative numbers, it will slide down. And just so we can hear what it sounds like um, going in the opposite direction, it should sound like this. All right, ring modulation. Definitely one of the cooler uh, effects.
effects and titles. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is look at a larger, more complicated example. That's something that more like you would see in an actual live coding environment. Um, this has five different instruments. The first one is a synth that uses uh, speed for pitch, um, delay, reverb, bit crushing, phaser, phase depth, um, a little bit of filtering, and then it uses amp to kind of back things off. The second instrument is a bass instrument that I'm bit crushing and I'm putting a bandpass frequency on. The third one is a hi-hat pattern um, that I'm also putting a bandpass frequency. I'm controlling the Q amount and I'm crushing. And then instruments four and five are more drone melodic instruments. It's a saxophone and the Moog sound uh, from ring modulation that I'm using the ring modulator on and I'm playing with the speed of the playback um, and the speed of the playback for. So, and there's a little bit of slide that's happening with the ring modulation as well. And what's nice about having these sort of prepackaged um, examples is that you can play, you can bring them up or out at will you can manipulate them on the fly. Um, let's go ahead and listen to a little bit of that. And that will do it for this episode of Let's Live Code. If you like what you have heard here, please hit like and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, death threats, or hate mail, please leave those in the comments below. And I look forward to 